All glories to the summer devotees. All glories to the summer devotees. All glories to the summer devotees. All glories, all glories to Sigur and Goranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narutama Devin Sarasati Vyasa Tattu Jaya Muti Raya Nastra Payesa Bhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloka Bhakti Bhavaiti Naistiki so, Sriman Bhagavatam, Canto 9. Mm-hmm. Beginning from Chapter 1, Introduction. It's not here. I think this ends with the mass, this ends with the Pansya incarnation, yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so the title of this chapter, uh, come to nine, chapter one. Title is King Sudumna Becomes a Woman. So I'll just read through the chapter summary. This chapter describes how Sujumna became a woman and how the dynasty of Weberswata Manu was amalgamated with the Soma Vamsa, the dynasty coming from, this, from the moon. By the desire of Maharaj Parikshit, Sugadev Goswami told about the dynasty of Weberswata Manu, who was formerly King Satyavrata, the ruler of Dravida. While describing this dynasty, he also described how the Supreme Personality of Godhead, while lying down in the waters of devastation, gave birth to Lord Brahma from a lotus generated from his navel. From the mind of Lord Brahma, Marishi was generated, and his son was Kashyapa. From Kashyapa, through through Aditi, Viveswan was generated. And from Viveswan came Sradadev Manu, who was born from the womb of Samgya. Sadadev's wife, Shraddha, gave birth to ten sons, such as Ishwaku, Riga, and Riga. Sadadev, or Weberswatabanu, the father of Mara's Ishwaku, was sonless before Ishwaku's birth. But by the grace of the great sage Vasista, he performed a jagya to satisfy Mitra and Varuna. Then, although Viveswata Manu wanted a son by the desire of his wife, he got a daughter named Ila. Manu, however, was not satisfied with the daughter. Consequently, for Manu's satisfaction, the great sage Vasista prayed for Ila to be transformed into a boy. Prayer. 
no plastic surgery. And his prayer was fulfilled by the Supreme Personality of God. Thus, Eli became a beautiful young man named Sudumna. Once upon a time, Sudumna went on tour with his ministers. All the food, mm, at the foot of the mountain Sumeru, there is a forest named Sukumara. And as soon as they entered that forest, they were all transformed into women. Powerful forest. When Marlos preached, <laughs> when Marlos preached it, inquired from Sukadev Goswami about the reason for this transformation. Sukadev Goswami described how so Dumna being transformed into a woman accepted Buddha, the son of the moon, as her husband and had a son named Pururawa. By the grace of Lord Shiva, so Jumna received the benediction that he would live one month as a woman and one month as a man. Hmm. Thus he regained his kingdom and had three sons named Utkala, Gaya, and Vimala, who were all very religious. Thereafter, he entrusted his kingdom to Purawa and took the order of Vana Prasta life. Hmm. So we'll go to text one. Sri. Hmm. Sri Raja Uaj, Sri Raja Uacha, Manu Wantara, Manu Wantara Nisarvani, Twayoktaru Sutani Mi, Viryanyanta, Vira Viryasya Aristatra Kitanicha Can someone repeat? Can someone chant? Or we go to chant the the eighth uh, eight verse with uh, the Papa? Eight verse with the Papa. Okay. So translation. Um, translation by the divine graces confirmed the charter. Shila Abhachan of Indubak to the Dhan Swami Papa. King Parikshit said, My Lord, Sukadev Goswami, you have elaborately described all the periods of the various manus. And within those periods, the wonderful activities of the Supreme Personality of God, who has unlimited potency. I am fortunate to have heard all of this from you. Takes two to three. So I just read through so that we don't have to do all of the time. You saw Satya Vrato Nama Rajasi Dravi Deshwaraha Gyanam Yotita Kalpante Lebe Puru Sasevaya Savai Vivasvata Putro Manu Asid Iti Sutam Tratas Tasya Sutta Prokta Eshwaku Pramukha Ripa. Translation Satyavrata, the saintly king of Dravida Desh, who received spiritual knowledge at the end of the last millennium by the grace of the Supreme, later became Vivaswatamanu, the son of Vivaswam, in the next Manvantara period of Manu. I have received this knowledge from you. I also understand that such kings as Ishwaku were his sons, as you have already explained. Text 4. Tesham Vamsam Prita Brahma Vamsa Nura Charitanicha 
kitaya swa mahaboga nityam susu satam hina translation o greatly fortunate sukadev goswami o great brahmana can you describe to us separately the dynasties and characteristics of all those kings for we are always eager to hear such topics from you text 5 ye bhuta ye bhavishyacha bhavantya dyatanas chaye tesham na punya kitinam sarvesam vada vikramam translation can you tell us about the abilities of the celebrated kings born in the dynasty of bhivaswan man including those who have already passed those who may appear in the future and those who exist at present text 6 si suta uvacha evam parikshita rajya saddasi brahma vandinam pristapo vacha bhagavan chu um chuka para madama wit <clears throat> translation suta goswami said when sukadev goswami the greatest knower of religious principles was thus requested by maharaj prikshi in the assembly of all the scholars learned in vedic knowledge he then proceeded to speak text 7 sri sukha ovacha suyatam manavo vamsa prachurena parantapa naksakyate vistarato vaktum vasa sata satayapi translation sukadev goswami continued O king subduer of your enemies now hear from me in great detail about the dynasty by the dynasty of man i shall explain as much as possible although one could not say everything about it hmm. even in hundreds of years so takes it this has a purpose so this is the text we have to center uh, focus on <clears throat> paravareshan bhutanam atmaya purusha paraha saeva sid idam vishwam kalpante nyana kinchana yes matajis matajis word for word translation 
para aways aware sham of all living entities in higher or lower statuses of life bhutanam of those who have taken material bodies the conditioned souls atma the super soul yaha one who is purusaha the supreme person paraha transcendental saha he eva indeed as it was existing idam this Vishwam Universe Kalpa Ante At the end of the millennium And yet Anything else Na Not Kinchana Anything whatsoever So translation of the Lord by the Vangris is confirmed the child Chile bachan vin the back to be done to swan pa pa ki Chile pa pa ki Chile pa pa ki The transcendental supreme person the super soul of all living entities who are in different statuses of life high and low existed at the end of the millennium when neither this manifested cosmos nor anything else but he existed please kindly respond for repeat <clears throat> the transcendental supreme person the super soul of all living entities who are in different statuses of life high and low existed at the end of the millennium when neither this manifests cosmos nor anything else but him existed <clears throat> so it's a brief pop out let's listen with rapt attention so the purpose pop out is very important to us uh taking the proper position from which to describe the dynasty of manu sukadev goswami begins by saying that when he when the entire world is inundated only the supreme personality of god that exists and nothing else so god dev goswami will now describe how the lord creates other things one after another omagena to me around this year kim to now sala ka ya saksur maritam Jena to smile, see you go in. So Jeta, I am an home this time. South here, I'm being brought to this way. I'm open, Karama, I'm blood out this one for Dante. Can one see Krishna Jeta, you know, each one was home to me. What a tie to us for one to cheat the channel to me. Now, I'm a vision for the Akrishna Vista Buddha to listen back to the Dante as Rami Utnam. Namaste, Sarah, Saturday, the God of Rami, Charlie, and Jesus, Sunday, Pachita, and the Saturday. Pancha Kalpa Taribya Chakrupa Sundiya Yoga Chakrupa Patitanam Pavanindu Vashnam Yona Mona Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Si Advaita Gadara Si Basada Si Gaur Bhaktadeva Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 So this chapter is also another very intriguing chapter because the content of this chapter basically is not something difficult to understand because some of these things are already happening these days in a different form in a different scientific approach but you know the substance is the same people become transformed they change so <clears throat> here uh, basically Sukadev Goswami uh, we find Bhagavatam there is always uh, a dialogue going on to be able to generate a transcendental information for the benefit of human society there is 
Always a dialogue going on. So, here the dialogue between Maharaj Prakshit is reflected here in this chapter. Maharaj uh, Prakshit is asked, has asked Sukadev some questions. He wanted Sukadev Goswami to elaborate, to give more information, more details about, you know, these wonderful kings, these great kings. The Manus. <clears throat> so, Kappa mentions in the pop up in the uh, following text, Sukadev will commence the description of, uh, you know, the different aspects or the segments of creation, the different uh, arrangements that the Lord has put in place. And so the whole thing is about a creation. A creation. In the very first chapter of the, I mean, the very first text of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it just sums up all of these stuff. That the Lord basically is the source of everything. And by Him, everything is manifested. Again, the Upanishad also mentioned the same thing. It's just in different semantics, but the substance is the same. <clears throat> and so, in, in the summary aspect, summary part that we read, we also hear some very intriguing, uh, intriguing things, how people could just walk into a particular environment and their physical features become transformed. These things, if you read the very literature, you find a number of these cases. Sometimes people are even cursed to be tra become transformed. One king in a Mahabharata, he did, he did something that India was not very happy, so India created some, uh, some avenue where he became, he became transformed into a woman. You are laughing? <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, this king, this king, I've forgotten his name, but in our reading that story, it was so intriguing. So, I mean, it correlates with, you know, this uh, scenario here. Who knows the name of that king? I don't know. Anyway, let's go, let's get the, the story. Let's sort this stop. So, <clears throat> He didn't, he, 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 India was not happy with him for one, thing, one reason or the other. So India made some arrangement and uh, he, he got trapped. He fell into the trap. And so he, he, he became transformed into a woman. Anyway, uh, he got, so he had to leave the kingdom. I mean, she has to leave the kingdom. Now she, she has to leave the kingdom and got married and all this stuff. <clears throat> Got some children. So then, Inda wanted, <laughs> Inda wanted, he, he wanted her to, to be, again become transformed, and to change again to a man and go and take over his kingdom. She said no. She said no. She's, you know, she's okay with the position that, the new position of being a woman. You remember that story? <laughs> anyway, so the point is, uh, his her argument was that I have tasted being a man. Now I tasted being a woman, and I feel that you know being a woman is more enjoyable. <laughs> Being a female is more enjoyable. So she declined. She, she said no. She said, <laughs> so I remember uh, when, I, when I first read that story, I was in Pennsylvania. So then I was in one of my friend's place, one white guy. And uh, in a number of, a number of people in, in that um, Harrisburg, they were, <clears throat> they were coming to see me. So there was this lady, very tall lady, 
widely. So she was telling me some stories about her, her life in terms of, you know, her relationship, her husband, and all this stuff. So I, so I just jokingly, you know, asked her that. So, okay, you have, you know, you separated from your man, but suppose you, you complain about it, but suppose you've been given an option to become a man. How would you like it? She said, no way. <laughs> so that also reinforces you know the story in the Bhagavatam. I mean in, in the Mahabharata. That even right now, if you give some women, some ladies, they've not they they've not experienced the life of a man, okay? The social life of a man in terms of relationship. But you know, they prefer to be, I mean, she preferred to be a woman. So I, I asked about the reason, and she told me the reason. I don't want to tell you the reason. <laughs> but it's the same reason that, you know, that king, uh, who later became a woman, the same reason that she gave, the same reason why she wouldn't want to become a man again. This lady also gave the same reason. She never read the Mahabharata. So it's from her own realization. So the bottom line is that these bodies, we have acquired these bodies and we just have to use it. They are aspects of creation. It means they are subject to destruction. The bodies change. But within these bodies, according to Lord Brahma, even Lord Krishna reentreated that, you know, several places in the, in the, in the, in the Gita. According to Lord Brahma, he says that within, and each, within each and every body, the super soul is there. Adantaratma paramanu, cheyantarastam. Again, Lord Krishna reinforces that statement or reintroduces that statement in the Gita. Ishwara sabra bhutana, read, say, Arjuna tested. And not only one place, again in 1515, Lord Krishna reintroduced. Sarvacha Saham, read it, Sanim Vistu. So, all of these are pointing to one single factor that this body, yes, is subject to destruction, is part of the material creation, but it is a temple. Where the Lord is situated is what? C.C. Rukmini Dwaka, this is the presiding deity here. He said, this place is a temple, whether you like it or not, isn't it? So our bodies, although they are part of material creation, subject to maintenance and destruction, just like the universe, or just like the universes, this body is a mini universe. Because within this body, there are so many other entities living in this body. There are so many worms, germs, viruses, so many things. Who can deny it? So this body is a mini universe. All of the elements of creation, they are also within this body. Bumi, Appa, Nala, Vayu, Kam, Mana, Bodhi, Ahankar. Yes. And therefore, the important thing for us, if we are going through this chapter, basically giving us details about creation, but then, we are part of the creation. And house business over the years, since time immemorial, is moving from one loka to the other, one brahmanda to the other. Brahmanda, brahmi, te, konya, bhagya, one jiva. The business of the jiva is to relocate. We're born in Los Angeles. We grow up here. We school here. We want to work. I will say, no. I had to move to New York. <laughs> we are not satisfied with a particular location for a long time. So it is not something new that people like to relocate. It's been the inherent nature of the conditioned soul. And so as the, the jiva is always it's been moving from since time immemorial, from one Brahmanda to the other. 
So our inherent nature, we can't change it. We like to move. But the whole idea of creation is just designed to, to uh, make people to relocate. But devotional service, devotional culture is to stop this whole process of moving from one local to the other. To stop this cycle of being part of the material creation. Because there is nothing here. There's nothing, nothing within the material creation. The Bible mentions that well, we may work so hard for sukkah, but sukkah and dukkah, the our share is designed. It's already been designed. And so, what is the use? Therefore, the Bible says, "Tashiva he to prayer theater COVID." The Kavis, the intelligent people, they, they want to dissociate themselves from this whole process of creation, maintenance, and destruction. These bodies are undergoing that process. The, bigger, the big universe, or the big universes are also doing that. These bodies, our bodies are also subject to that. The same process. Creation, maintenance, destruction. And sometimes people out there, they don't really care. They don't make, there's no inquiries. Again, the man better said that's the most amazing thing because people see others dying and everyone else is thinking, ah, I'll live forever. If, if, if even they don't say that overtly by their behavior, it tends to portray that they think, I will live forever. So devotion and service by the mercy of Shri Prabhupada, by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Prabhu, Sukadeva Goswami, Sutta Goswami, all of these great sages, they're helping us to understand that we have to use this human form of life to stop this whole process of upariyada, going back, going up, coming down, going up, coming down, Because it becomes chewing the chew. Puna punas chavita chavanana. We take bodies, it's just the same thing. And so, interesting thing here is that, like this text 8 is, uh, is indicating that the Supreme Lord is the super soul of all living beings. He's there in each and every. In, in the heart region of each and every one. The, uh, the Upanishad basically bring to bear that along with the soul, the super soul is there to direct the wanderings. Krishna also really mentioned that in the Gita. To direct the wanderings of the conditioned entities. And sometimes Krishna is even directing our wanderings and we pay no heed. We don't give it down. This is the beauty of conditioned life. So, we have to take to heart what this cosmic, uh, cosmic creation is all about, subject to destruction. Our bodies are also subject to destruction. We should take advantage of this one human life perform devotional service under the guidance of the acharyas and get out from this material world. We should not feel comfortable here because there is nothing here. It's all about puna punas charvita charvanana chewing the chewed. If you see someone pick up some shaf, some sugarcane shaf, on the road and it's chewing. What will you say? It's crazy. Isn't it? Are we crazy? <laughs> it's already past the time. Any comments or questions? 
in the absence of any comments or questions, I'd like to thank all of you for your hospitality. And uh, I hope that before I give up this body, I'm able to come again to, <laughs> to have your association. I very much thank the temple management and uh, especially my wonderful young friend, uh, Dr. Vasala, who has always been keeping me company since I came. So, I'll be leaving today. Uh, at about 11 o'clock, I'll, I'll be going to uh, San Diego. And then from there, I'll stay for a couple of days towards the weekend. I'll be leaving to the East Coast again. So, thank you very much. And uh, let me make a request. Suppose you see me somewhere and you greet, you greet me. And then I answer you very casually. Pull, pull me over and say, hey, Maharaj, I know you. I, I met you in such a place. <laughs> because sometimes we, see so many, we meet so many people, we see so many people. And, you know, that's the problem I have on, on Facebook also. People send requests and all these things. So my first, you know, inquiry is please kindly let me know where you might have known me. Yeah, because we want to be personal, not inter not impersonal. I give classes, and you meet me somewhere, and you greet me, and I may not remember everybody. If I answer you as if I don't seem to know you, pull me over and, <laughs> and introduce yourself to me, please. That saves a lot of you know uh, negative impression of oh he doesn't care he doesn't know me and people feel very bad i remember one girl we, we had a long uh, uh, some discussion in nirvindala and so she 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 she, she, she was now uh, serving in uh, in dc so she greeted me very cordially so i said hey uh what do you know me oh she got she she was infuriated <laughs> I said, please, 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 don't be offended. Don't, don't get angry with me. I just want to be clarified because if I pretend as if, okay, uh, hello, you will not like it. You know, then she, you know, she told me, oh, we, we, have, um, we have some discussion in New Brindava and such and such a time. Yeah, so, because see, our movement, is, our movement is and should be based on interpersonal relationships. If we make the movement impersonal, then we could just drive so many new people who are coming away. So yeah, this is my humble request. If you greet me somewhere and I behave as if I don't know you properly, you pull me over. Sila okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.